Isabel, can you tell me about the genesis of this research project and why you chose the Mission to Mars project to test your hypothesis? Well, as a former teacher, I've always been really interested in finding ways to improve teaching and learning in science and specifically the really challenging aspect of teaching um, how science is done and how scientific knowledge develops and how scientists work, which we call the nature of science. Mm -hmm. So uh, essentially, uh, you know, that's, that's a really fundamental aspect of understanding science and a lot of people have misconceptions about that. So a lot of people think that science is very rigid and it's a linear process, you know, the scientific method and that, you know, um, researchers and scientists follow that step by step method to discover facts. And that's a misconception. And, and of course, many people have that misconception because that's how science is taught at school. Yeah. It's how it's, ta it's taught in universities even. Uh, and you know, so most people have never really experienced doing science. So of course they have that misconception. So I wanted to know um, if people do science, will that change their misconceptions? And there's uh, a really great program at the Victorian Space Science Education Center in Melbourne called Mission to Mars, where students get to become scientists. So they, they become Mars astronauts. Mm -hmm. They go on a simulated surface of Mars. They cool. do um, a, a geological field survey, collect soil and rock samples, and then they return to Earth and go to the lab and analyze their samples, write a report. So they take part in that whole scientific process. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious to see if that kind of experience of really doing science would change their perceptions. And the center was also really curious. So we embarked on, on this study together. Science is about asking questions. It's about curiosity and it's about creativity and imagination. You know, scientists have to, you know, some scientists look for rocks and look at rocks. Uh, some, you know, are scuba diving and exploring and observing, um, you know, the oceans. Others are looking up at the sky um, at night. And so there are many different sciences and there are many different ways to do science. And it requires a lot of creativity in how we design investigations, how we collect data, how we interpret that data, uh, how we draw conclusions. And so that's a really huge part of science, but it's not a very, very huge part of science in schools and in university. And that's where a lot of the misconceptions come from. What did the astrobiology project involve? How long did it go for and what kinds of activities were students involved in? So we involved uh, students who took part in the Mission to Mars program between May and September 2018. All the students who were taking part were asked to be part of the study and essentially the students uh, went to the Victorian Space Science Education Centre. They took part in their Mars mission and what we did was we asked them, we tested the students before and after. So we gave them a little test to complete before they went uh, on their mission and then uh, the exact same test again about a week after they did their mission. And that test asked them questions about how science is done and what it means to study something scientifically. And there were two different types of questions. There were questions that were um, rating scales. So there was yeah. a statement and then and quant students had- Quantitative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So students decided, do I agree with that statement or disagree with that statement? And then that's, you know, a one or a five, you know, a five, point scale. But we also had open-ended questions where we got the students to write a response, um, like a little mini essay response um, relating to how science is done and, and what it means to study something scientifically. And then we analyzed all those um, responses and um, looked at the differences between their responses before they went to, on their mission and then after they went on their mission to see if there were any differences. 
The press report mentions that this study and a previous one relied on quantitative analysis of results which didn't yield much information before adopting a more qualitative approach by looking at the student's writing. How can you explain how the real findings were, quote, hidden in the figures? Yes, they were hidden in the figures. It's really interesting. Uh, so one of my colleagues ran a very similar study just a few years before, and um, she used a similar uh, program to Mission to Mars, and then the same questions about how science is done. And she found that there wasn't much of a difference before and after the program. Uh, and when I ran my analysis, I, ran, I found the same thing. So what I did when I analyzed the responses was for the rating scales, I had a score of one to five. And then for the written responses, I read the responses and I had a rubric and I scored the responses according to the rubric. So one score of one, two and three. And then I statistically analyzed those numbers. And I found very little difference, but actually in some aspects, I even found a decrease in their scores, in the student scores um, after the experience. Now, in looking at those, well, first I ran them twice because I thought that's impossible, they can't have decreased. Uh, so I ran the numbers twice and got the same thing. And so I thought, you know, my approach to the analysis, which was the same as my colleagues, was um, essentially taking this very complex and nuanced text that the students had wrote, written and compressing it into a single number, a score, right, using the rubric. And I thought, surely we're missing something here. Um, you can't take something that complex and reduce it to a score and expect to find something. What can I do to really explore what is in those responses? So I used a content analysis software to look at the themes that were coming out of the students' responses. I also psychoanalyzed the responses using um, a psycholinguistic text analysis software. And the responses, the results that came out of that were that the students were uh, showing signs of cognitive conflict, which means that um, they, their existing ideas and knowledge of how science is done was in disparity with what they had just experienced and they didn't add up but they hadn't actually brought those new ideas yet into their existing knowledge structures so they were kind of you know juggling those two ideas and how does one fit with the other and that is the spark that causes learning so they were in this you know, cognitive conflict. What's next in challenging students' perceptions of the recipe-like approach to science that has dominated for years in Australian schools? These results are really important to share, uh, share with the public, uh, share with teachers, share with parents, but also policymakers and people involved in, in education. I think that education needs to, to change to allow learners to actually explore a little bit more and be less maybe standardized and rigid. Um, one of the best things that teachers, for example, can do, uh, I know that they um, are very limited in the way that they can teach and all the things that they are required to do and teach. But um, one really simple thing that they can do in their science classrooms is to let students ask their own questions. So instead of asking them questions or giving them, I guess, maybe like a recipe like uh, lab experiment to follow or things like that, where they need to answer a question, let them ask a question. Let them say, I wonder if, yeah. and then let them be creative and explorative in answering their own question, because that's what science is really about. It's almost like that discovery learning approach. Yes, yeah. yes, let them be, let students explore, let students uh, 
you know, come up with different ways of finding out an answer of, of being curious, uh, to, you know, find the answer to their own questions. That's the essence of science. But we often forget that because we have to teach them certain things. We need to teach them certain facts. Uh, but we often forget to let them explore and be scientists.